What's up, my peoples? Okay, so we are doing our last macromolecule today. Um, so super complex macromolecule because it has the most elements in it. It's carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, just like our carbohydrates and our lipids. It's got some nitrogen, just like our protein. And then it also has some phosphorus. Okay, so uh, it's the most complex as far as elements are concerned. Um, and the monomer unit of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. Its job is to store and transmit our hereditary information so you know that saying shake what your mama gave you your mama gave you your dna so that's what we're talking about okay there's dna there's rna and then there's this really cool molecule called atp um and we're going to talk about atp a lot when we get to awesome cool amazing energy <clears throat> um but for now it's just kind of cool to know that it is a nucleic acid um so each nucleotide in a nucleic acid um, has three particular structural units. And we actually did this when we did our nucleic dehydration synthesis lab because that one was easy and really cool one to start with. Um, but there is a phosphate group. There is a sugar group. And this can be deoxyribose, and that'll make it DNA, or it can be regular old ribose, and that'll make it RNA. And then there is a nitrogen base. <clears throat> So, um, these uh, three components here um, make up the base of, an, of a nucleic acid, which is a nucleotide, okay? So, the monomer is a nucleotide, okay? Cool thing is that these nitrogen bases right here, they can be any of five different um, nitrogen bases. The four that we find on deoxyribose sugar, which make up our DNA, are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, okay? So like in our little picture down here, we can see a quick comparison of a DNA to an RNA, and there are those four um, nitrogen bases, okay? On the flip side of that, there are the ribose sugars can have cytosine, which is the same, guanine, which is the same, adenine, which is the same, but instead of thymine, they're gonna have a uracil, okay? Um, for a lot of crazy particular reasons that we don't have to know just yet. Um, but we can also see this really obvious difference that DNA is double helix. You can see two strands of it kind of weaving around like this versus um, the helical shape of a RNA with only one strand, okay? Uh, that they're not binding with hydrogen bonds here across at the nitrogen bases, okay? Um, so... You can see we got this yellow adenine here. It binds only to thymine. Our blue cytosine only binds to guanine. Um, and so they're specific in how they bond and what they're doing and like the information that they're passing. And because they're so specific, that's how we code for proteins that are going to do that bomb diggity stuff that we love and kind of get the job done for us. Okay, so they're super cool. Um, they have slight differences and we'll talk about those a lot more when we get to um, heredity and all that jazz. Um, but for now, just kind of know the basis um, of those two differences. Okay, so obviously when we talk about our monomers, our nucleotides, we also have to talk about how we bind those and we get polymers. Okay, um, so our binding always happens the same way through the process of dehydration synthesis, um, also known as a condensation reaction. Um, and the form, the bond that forms when we go through the dehydration synthesis process and we form this backbone of alternating phosphate sugar, phosphate sugars, is called a phosphodiester bond. Okay, or a phosphodiester linkage. Okay, so this is unique to um, our awesome nucleotides binding together um, through phosphodiester linkages. Okay, so like with um, all of our macromolecules, we like to kind of zone in on what that directionality is and like what do we mean by directionality. Um, and so all nucleotides, they have a three prime end. Okay, we don't call it three apostrophe, we call it three prime, uh, and, and a phosphate prime, uh, or a five prime end. Sorry, I said phosphate. Um, so the nucleotide polymers are linked together and they build this 
polynucleotide, which is basically just a DNA molecule or a RNA molecule bound together, okay? So adjacent nucleotides are joined by covalent bonds um, that form between the OH groups, okay, on the three prime carbon of one nucleotide and the phosphate on the five end, um, five prime end. What that means is RNA, it's going to flow in one direction. It's going to be three to five um, because it's only one single strand. However, DNA is actually going to run opposite of each other. We call this anti-parallel, okay? And because of that, it's going to make sure we have like precise copying when we have to make copies of DNA. We have precise transcribing when we have to make copies of RNA to help us out with our uh, amino acids formations um, and building of polypeptide bonds. Um, and so we're really like fortunate that uh, our, you know, macromolecule nucleic acids have their own little built-in like check system so that they're staying in the right order and that we're able to actually like give us the information that we need to make sure we look the right way and we do the right things. So that's really cool. Um, and like we said, so nucleic acids, they have their different ends, and we define them through three, three prime and five prime. Um, and the five prime end is always going to have this free floating phosphate out on the side here. And that's an easy way to remember because there's that phosphate is the five prime. Um, so that's one is really simple to remember. And so you can see here that there's a five prime end here where the phosphate's free. And then opposite of it, um, anti-parallel, the five prime end is going to be the opposite way. So you can see these are kind of oriented what we'll call right side up, and these are kind of oriented upside down, okay? And then you can see that there is a three prime end, which is just the free OH at the end, and they run opposite of each other as well, okay? So these guys are covalently bonded, okay, through the phosphodiester linkages. And this is going to make up the backbone of our um, DNA molecule, okay? Across the rungs of this double helix ladder, um, we have hydrogen bonds binding our nitrogen bases together, and they're very specific with the which ones they bond to, okay? Um, so, all of that to say, um, nucleic acids are awesome. Um, this one's a short, very short lecture. And the only reason is because we're going to hit this a whole lot more. Um, but if we start to see and start to understand the structure of DNA, we're just going to be better off in the long run. It doesn't hurt to see things multiple times. Okay. So um, if you have any questions, please make sure you let me know. I'm here for you and have a great rest of your day.